Hey everyone, welcome back to another My Furry Protogen. Whoa, yes, we are back with Juno and yeah, if you're new, subscribe. If you're not, you know the drill. Watch my other videos. Hope you're having a wonderful day or night. I guess day, evening, afternoon, morning, whatever. Let's go. Yeah, we also have a Discord. Keep just join. Don't need to chat or anything. Just join. I want to see what happens when there's like at least five people in there. Juno pointed to a bed in the corner of the compartment. I read this, correcto? I'm not streaming, of course. Of course, I won't have a live reply. Then, good night, I guess. Good night? Oh, yeah, I guess. Don't you wish good night? No, we just say bye. Bye, Brizzy. See you tomorrow. That's a weird, funny way of saying it. I smiled and shrugged my shoulders. Bye, Juno. I think I'm getting back in the groove of like making content again i'm like getting in there every time i feel like i feel burnt out let's say i'm taking a bit, a bit more chewable content i guess i'm chewing more than i can swallow pause but yeah it's like okay let me do let me finish something that that's a bit difficult to do do it one slowly even if it takes a month i don't give a shit Going back to the game, our journey continued the next day as it turned out Juno was a pretty early bird. She got up even earlier than I was used to. The sun had not yet risen and she was already walking around the jet, sometimes hiding in her laboratory. I didn't know that what kind of laboratory it was, we didn't have anything like that, but as Juno explained to me, the laboratory was a special place where she did her research. The next day, my whole body ached. I wasn't used to such long travels, I had never walked so much before. Juno informed me that we would stay at this location for another day to take a few remaining samples and then go to the swamp at night to collect materials of nocturnal plants and animals. I don't mind, although I don't want to go anywhere, Juno's bed turned out to be just magical. Soft as a feather, comfortable, big, it was a pleasure to sleep on it. And what I liked the most, no one woke me up at dawn trying to drag me off to always the same breakfast and exercise with Damien. But despite how much I rejoiced at the freedom that finally appeared, an unpleasant longing stirred in my chest. Hmm, he misses his family, huh? Or maybe not. It's more of a longing where you were used to. Something that you don't really enjoy, but since that's now your comfort zone, it's hard to break free from it. That's how addiction starts. When we were walking through the woods and Juno was collecting the remaining samples, she asked, why are you so sad? Did something happen? I immediately kicked my thoughts away and tried to take control of my facial expression. No, it's fine. I was just thinking. Why do you ask? I don't know. I thought you were worried about something. Well, if you don't want to talk, then of course you don't have to. Where's the ring? Put her in a ringer. Juno gave, her, gave up her questions too quickly and smiled as she went back to work. We continued the way through the forest, and thanks to Juno, it was easier for us. She found the best pathways by scanning the area with her helmet, and I could immerse myself in not the most in, in not the most joyful thoughts. I was thinking about my parents. I was gone for two days already, which had never happened before, and I didn't know how they were feeling now or what they were doing out there. They must have been terribly worried, totally freaked out, and I was sure they were looking for me, but what could I do? Did I push myself to such an act? I kicked the tree branch near my foot and sighed. I didn't make this choice in the first place. I didn't want to be chosen. But now, for once, I chose what to do and where to go. Juno was fun, but from time to time, I thought back to my parents, even though I tried to control it. Hey, I think we can go back to Pixie, by the way. Uh, I was thinking, maybe you need to pack something to eat. What about mushrooms? We could cook them? I have a kitchen on the jet. Juno turned to me, holding the last sample, which she shoved into my backpack. I immediately tensed up. I didn't really know a damn thing about mushrooms. Only that bright red and bright yellow are deadly poisonous mushrooms that can kill a huge animal, but which of the others were edible? Mm. You know, it's probably better to dig up the roots of plants. They are more nutri nutritious and tastier. Our mushrooms are not that good. Okay, whatever you say. What do you usually eat? Oh, well, a lot of things. All sorts of cereals, vegetables, fruit. We also eat meat. We have a whole family of hunters in the village. They bring home game animals and fishermen provide fish. Do you need to buy all this from each other? Not really. We exchange with each other uh, a barter system. An 
ancient way of uh, an ancient trading system in economy or an, the old economy real old hunters and fishermen usually bring meat and fish farmers bring vegetables fruits and cereals ranchers get milks and eggs traders provide clothes they get food for it in general everyone does what they can interesting quite an old system exactly we are alone here. The elders used to sell some things to neighboring villages for crystals, but they live far away. And our relations have deteriorated, so we have been supporting ourselves for several years. So you have crystals. Great. We'll need to find a couple. We will need to go to the lands of the eastern villages. They have mountains there in which crystals are mined. Great. Then we'll go there. So what kind of roots did you want to dig up? I scratched the back of my head and looked around carefully. It was necessary to come up with the idea right now. Actually, I really need to find food. I couldn't just eat Juno's supply. She probably had a limited amount meant only for her, but I didn't want to get poisoned again at all. And then I pointed to a plant that looked more or less familiar. These, they are very nutritious and delicious. Wait a minute, just a second. I took a hold of the stems and pulled with all my strength, almost plopping down my ass. There were too few roots, so I had to pull out a few more of them. I think that's enough. you like it. Just Juno shrugged her shoulders. Well, I hope so. Come on, Pixie, we'll help you. Did not see that comma over there. Back on the jet, we started cooking. I don't know how to cook. After all, my parents were villi villagers cooked all the food for me throughout my life and therefore I didn't know at all what to do with the raw ingredients. But I didn't want to lose face in front of Juno so I tried to deal with it. In the end, I just washed the roots and put them into boiling water. The dish turned out disgusting. It was a stretch to call it even a dish. The roots turned out to be quite different from what I expected. They were sour, bitter, softened like oatmeal and bland. But Juno was watching me carefully as I ate, so I had to carefully control my facial expression. Well, how do you like it? I threw all my strength into not making a face. It's great! So yummy! Oh my god, this guy is a fucking liar! Liar, liar, pants on fire. Oh, I almost choked. One of the pieces got stuck in my throat, and I immediately washed it down with water. Juno was sitting across from me, her head propped on her head. Honestly, it looks disgusting. She made a sad expression with her helmet, but I'd already gotten used to most of her digital facial expressions. It was still strange for me not to see the face of the person I was communicating with, and only a picture, like in a book. No, I'm telling you, it's yummy. Sure, you don't want to try it? Juno shook her head. No, I have my own food. Thank you, Brizzy. The smell is even worse than the sight of this thing. Do you really eat that? Brizzy? You're fumbling the bag, son. I swallowed another mouthful with difficulty. Yes, it is very healthy. There are a lot of different sorts of, well, vitamins and other useful substances in this plant. And it tastes much better than it looks. It's so great that every planet has its own interesting traditions. I put on a smile which wasn't so easy for me. <laughs> You're gonna be like, this guy, I call bullshit. I smell, I see bullshit. Ten parsecs away. The swamp was illuminated by a bright purple light hovering in the sky. As Juno noted, it was one of the satellites of our planet. We simply called it Tilia, which appeared at night and replaced Iria, our sun. We had been walking through the swamp for half the night, all the while Juno was looking with interest at... Sorry, I'm about to like either burp or, uh, I don't know, sneeze. Juno was looking with interest at all the bugs, worms, spiders that came across uh, on our way. In the swamps, these creatures were big, the size of a palm, so I once again tried not to step on them. Juno didn't disdain at all and grabbed them with her bare hands, examining and touching each vile swamp creature. Ah, oh, you better put it down. Juno stroked the furry body of a well-fed bright red spider with fluffy paws. The very, the very sight of it gave me goosebumps and I wanted to either run away or smear this monster across the ground with one kick. But Juno didn't share my views on these creatures. To her, they were all interesting and cute. Why are you overreacting? Look how pretty it is. Such cute fluffy legs. Cute? These brats look like monsters. Juno smiled at me gently. Well, many inhabitants of the universe look like monsters, but in fact are very nice and kind creatures. For example, the inhabitants of the planet uh, OU87, OU871098E look like huge mutated worms and stink of natural mucus. But they are very pleasant guys. They were so hospitable, they invited me to their place right away, showed me everything, and allocated the whole delegation to give me an excursion around their planet. They invited me to come back, but so far I had no time to make a visit. Can I ask a question? 
Juno shrugged her shoulders. Of course, Brizzy asked. Why do you need permission? Well, it's just a bit of a personal question. Juno waved her hand. Of course, ask. I'm listening. Why did you decide to, well, travel the, the universe? Have you always wanted to do this or do you just have no choice? There was silence. Juno apparently was considering my question. She lowered her hand, allowing the vile, terribly red belly thing that was barely even worth calling a creature at all to crawl away. If this is some kind of painful topic for you, then... No, 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 no. I was just thinking how to make the story short. You know, my species has a long history. We were once just some slaves created to replace real soldiers in a war. An artificial species created in labs with the help of science. But after many efforts, we gained our freedom and became a normal species with free will. Since then, most of us just pursue either an assortment of collective goals or individual dreams. Some protogens work for a government and complete special missions. Some live a normal life on our home planet and some of them, like me, live on their own and travel through the universe. Since I was born, I always wanted to study biology, but maybe because I was imprinted in my genes when I was created. I've never thought about anything else since I became free. I had no- I, I barely understand a word she just said. So it's like, um, your fate? Something like that? Juno turned to me with a thoughtful expression on her helmet. Fate? Is that some kind of gacha game? Or anime? I'm just kidding. Is that like a religious concept about predetermined future? Yeah, something like that. Here we have, for example, Mother of Heaven. She creates fate, she lives in a cloud, and weaves destiny for heaven from heavenly threads. If you can't go against this fate, she decides who you will become and what you will do. And in general, she determines her whole life. And how do you know what she decided? Well, usually someone just lives their whole life without making any changes and believes that this is the only way it should be. The roof of, your ho the roof of your house fell in? So this is your fate. A flood killed the cattle? Your fate? A linear? Very simple. This is your fate. Damn, that's kind of stupid. We live like that, and we only believed in fate. And what about the unusually? I frowned, not understanding what Juno meant. What do you mean? Well, you said it's usually like this, but what about the exceptions? Damn, she's good. I bit my lip thinking about her words. My gaze fell on Tilia, frozen in the sky, illuminated by a pinkish, purple glow. Well, one time, our elder said that Lit... This is the younger brother of Mother of Heaven came to him and told him that one of the um, that one boy from our village is the chosen one. And Lit told of his fate that he was destined to live in the village all his life, and then when he turned twenty one, become the head of the settlement. And that this boy is supposed to save our village and its inhabitants from some terrible trouble in the future. And if he leaves, nothing can be saved and our village will be destroyed. That's horrible! How can they say such a thing to a child? It is simply unacceptable. Or is it normal for a culture? I shrugged my shoulders. I don't know, but I mean, this boy didn't like what he heard at all, and he has lived his, like this all his life, not daring to do anything of his own free will. The villagers decided everything for him because they believed that since he was their savior, it meant that he became their property. Something like that. Sad story. When did it happen? Did this boy save his village? I smiled mirthlessly. Well, no, in fact, it's still unclear how this story will end. The boy is now, um, well, he's in the village, and he is preparing to save the village from who knows what. Do you believe that? And his fate? Juno looked at me with undisguised interest. For her, it all probably sounded like a fairy tale. However, it did for me too. I didn't know what to say. I didn't believe in fate, but at the same time, I understood that if my fate was predetermined, I wouldn't know about it. What if it's really like that? What if something happened to the village when I left? What if it comes back and it's been destroyed by Orochimaru or Pain from the Akatsuki? To be honest, no, I don't believe it. At least that's what I thought. That there is no fate and there is no mother of heaven or lit either. All this f is fiction in order to make life easier for people. What do you mean make life easier? Well, let's think about this too. People have always been afraid of a lot of things. Death, for example, or crop failure. They didn't know how to deal with that, so they came up with a fairy tale that some woman in heaven decides everything, that she runs everything. I guess this adds order to the chaos of you know what we call life. Remove religion, remove all the philosophy of these great people, whatever, and just say you're just living in the moment. It's quite chaotic, isn't it? Because you, you could die tomorrow, you could not breathe later, you could have a stroke five minutes from now. You don't know, it's such a chaotic thing. But it does put an ease in your mind if this is some grand plan or some great being. But at the same time, it's, it's like it depends on how many perspectives you want to look at this. You could be nihilistic about it, optimistic about it, realistic about it. You know, it is what it is. 
And after that, she will take us to heaven and let us work in helping create the universe. Somehow it made life easier and people are not so afraid to die anymore. Well, that's the exact idea of religion. It's similar in most of the planets with intelligent species. Though I'm surprised you understand that despite your limited knowledge about our universe. Juno smiled gently at me. You are truly a black sheep. I arched I arch an eyebrow not understanding what Juno was talking about. When am I? I have heard such an expression on one planet. Being a black sheep means that you are different from others, not like them. Hmm. I smiled and nodded. Yeah, I guess I really was black sheep. What about you? He said that some of you live far away from your planets. Is that a common thing? Not a common thing, but not too rare either, especially for scientists type protogens. Some has wanted freedom more than others, so it's okay for a protogen to live a lonely life without making contact with other protogens. For me, the universe and its nature is much more interesting than anything else. There's so many new and unexplored things out there in space. And you never wanted to go back home. Juno shrugged as she ba bagged another sample. Maybe sometimes, but not that much. Before I gained my freedom of will, I was working in a lab every day. I usually work with other protogen scientists, but since we all became free, nobody wanted to work with others, and everyone started their own journey as a lonely scientist. Well, maybe you don't have to be so lonely anymore. Hey, besides, the first generation of protogens never had families or close friends. It's not something that we were supposed to learn in our so-called childhood. How is that possible? Weren't you born by your mother's... or at least eggs or something like that? As I already said, we were created artif artificially in laboratories. We were created with the help of genetic engineering and VR training. Gene... what? Oh, Jenny, sorry. Well, it is something like deciding which characteristics the creature will have before it is born. You can make it strong, fast, tall, short, and hot, so on. The only difference from fate is that it's decided by another creature, not a god. Our creators made us strong and healthy, but obedient. Gladly, we destroyed our shackles and started a new life. But I won't tell you the whole story right now. It's really too long, and I'd have to explain too many things. Besides, I already told you a lot of things that I shouldn't have. Except for the slavery, it sounds very cool. I'd be happy to have the possibility to travel to distant places. I've been dreaming of traveling all my life to see at least our planet, but, well, I couldn't. Why not? Well, I don't have a jet to fly everywhere, and it's dangerous to travel alone on foot for such a weak creature like me. Though it's not so scary with someone else, I don't have any friends here. I'm sorry to hear that, Brizzy. Though I don't know if it's alright in your culture to not have friends. No, it isn't, actually. My peers have a lot of friends, but I, in short, I don't have anyone. Just parents, but they're not friends, so it's a bit different. Juno asked shrewdly, Do you have no friends because you don't believe in Mother of Heaven and Lit? I, hearing this from her, I smiled. It sounded really absurd, but I couldn't say why I really didn't have any friends. I didn't want to admit that I lied to Juno and wasn't qualified to help with your research. But I just grabbed the first chance I get to escape from the prison in which I spent my whole life. If Juno hadn't gone in my way, what would I have done? Probably I would have... Oh, I didn't... Probably I would have returned to the village. I would have come up with some story, begged the villagers to take me back, assured them that I realized all my mistakes, and you know, the, 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 the same script. Take me back, please. Or maybe I would just disappear into the woods because it would be better than returning to my own home. I think so, to some extent. I once told my friend Damon that I don't believe in all this. He reacted very aggressively. When he called me betrayer, I haven't told anyone since then that I think it's all nonsense. Juno smiled gently at me. Well, it doesn't matter now. Look, Rizzy, you're traveling right now. This is probably not what you expected and dreamed of, but... I shook my head, interrupting Juno. Listen, man, traveling with a hot furry protogen, don't matter protogen or not, with a hot person, and they're actually, they got the 10 out of 10 personality? Maybe traveling ain't so bad after all. No, 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 it's great, really. It's even now, this is the coolest adventure of my life. Besides, I was very lucky. Sorry for the child noises, there's... I'll tell you, this is a park near near me. Boom! I'm gonna get docks. Don't do that. But yeah. Besides, I was very lucky. I met you. I never thought that I would ever see inhabitants of other planets. It's so cool when your friend is an alien from outer space. I laughed merrily, sincerely, but for some reason Juno didn't share my joy. It was as if I had said something wrong, but I didn't understand what exactly. The image on her helmet changed. The smile disappeared, giving way to a sad expression. Is everything alright? Did I say something wrong? Let's get ready. I've already finished here. I scanned the rest with my helmet. We can finish with this territory and go to the next tomorrow morning. Here, take the samples and put them in your backpack. I brilliantly picked up the bag samples and shoved them into the large bag behind my shoulders. Juno, are you sure you're okay? 
I'm sorry if I blurted something out. Maybe it has some other meaning for you. I didn't even know. It's okay, Brizzy. Forget it. Juno smiled, but it seemed to me that even though the helmet, the smile looked too artificial and forced. No, really. If I said something wrong, that's okay. I told you. Come on. Pixie's waiting for us. There are the roots of yours that you cooked yesterday. I hope it will pass for dinner. I told you, man. Lying fucks you up. This is torture. I barely restrained a pain groan as I followed Juno with my backpack at the ready for any last minute samples. You know, I think they've gone bad. They're not usually stored for so long. Weird, I scanned them before I left. They're fresh. Besides, I froze them and and we never freeze them, so they're probably already gone bad. I'm telling you for sure, it's better not to eat anymore. Oh! Well, okay, what will you eat then? Do you have any of those fruits that you gave me? I'll check when we're there. Don't worry, I won't leave you hungry, Brizzy. Juno turned around and smiled at me over her shoulder, but there was still something fake in her smile, but I didn't understand what I was guilty of. She's like, you, I'll tell you, Brizzy, my species have a lie detector of sorts, and you've been alarming me since the beginning. We finished with a territory of forests around the northern valley and headed south, where a hot desert with a mercilessly, mercilessly scorching sun awaited us. As it turned out, Juno couldn't stand high temperatures, and I... Well, what was the point in hiding it? i never actually been to this place. I just knew it existed. I read about it in books. Juno wasn't thrilled because her cooling systems, as she called it, were having a hard time coping with such heat. It's scorching hot here, it's awful. Let's quickly scan everything here and get it over with. Whoa. Honey, calm down. I never I never do a uh, waifu would be mad like this. Yes, you're right. I don't want to stay here for a long time either. But she is human after all. Hey, Juno began to illuminate everything with the yellowish light that came from her helmet. She squatted down to study the sand and rocks while I loitered nearby, squinting from the blinding rays. Look, are you sure no one lives here? Juno got to her feet and looked at me. I shrugged my shoulders. Yeah, no one. Hmm, weird. What's weird? Did you find something? I don't even know. I haven't figured it out yet. Juno continued to scan the area. I suddenly remembered that I had to play the role of an omniscient person who knew the whole planet inside and out. So with the most unaffected facial expression, I said... I assure you, it's absolutely safe and no one lives here. Besides, who would survive in this heat? My words, which sounded so surprisingly natural and unperturbed, appeared to cheer Juno up. She continued to rummage in the sand, studying the pebbles and particles of various substances she came across. At that time, I could hardly stand on my feet, and the feeling of sweat trickling down my temples was an obvious sign to finish up the research quickly. Suddenly, I felt a jolt. It seemed to, it seemed to come from everywhere, as if the planet itself had shut in. Did you feel that? Juno turned to look at me and shrugged, trying to stay calm. I don't know, maybe it was just a falling rock? That's unlikely. My sensors have detected. At that moment, I screamed and jumped. The dry ground under my feet seemed to move. Juno looked at me and I looked back at her with, a huge, with huge eyes. What the? She didn't have time to finish. A huge something burst out of the ground. Sand splashed in all directions. The ground under my feet was shaking and I couldn't do anything to hold back a loud scream. Right between Juno and I, blocking our way to each other, a giant fat worm appeared. Oh my god, it's a Dune reference. Juno, run! Brizzy, over here! Juno dodged a huge round mouth of the worm and ran around the la large body, grabbing my hand. Due to the fact that I was confident in the safety of this place, we had moved quite far away from the jet. And now we could easily become the lunch of an underground worm. Juno ran away, still holding my hand, but I couldn't run as fast as she could. The worm, diving on the ground again, chased us, hoping to snatch its prey. You said there was no one here. I thought there was no one here. What you said you knew? I... It's over. The lies of crack. Sand got into my mouth. I coughed and as the ground moved away from the under my feet, I fell. Just at this moment, the huge worm popped out of the ground again. Juno! Juno, help! Juno froze in place. Interference jumped across her helmet and I couldn't understand the expression on her face. Can we see the worm? Sand got into my eyes. I could feel the worm coming towards me and smell the terrible stench from its mouth. <laughs> And after I had already said goodbye to life, there was a loud bang. I opened my eyes. Juno was holding what she called a gun in her hand. Yeehaw, cowboy! She aimed at the worm and pulled the trigger. Get up, quickly! The worm became distracted and squeaked loudly. So Juno grabbed me and almost dragged me to the jet. We barely had enough time to get in, so Juno threw me into a chair and shouted, Pixie, let's get out of here! Pixie obeyed, the jet hummed, and we soared into the air. I was breathing heavily, sitting in an armchair, trying to calm the frantic pounding of my heart. Juno was sitting next to me with her elbows on her knees and her head in her hands. Staring at the floor, her helmet was expressionless. 
We were silent for a few minutes while we just tried to catch our breath. My legs were still shaking from running so fast and my hip hurt from falling. Soon a bruise would appear. Phew, we did it. Oh my god, this is gonna be... Lying can get you so far in life. Either you're just a, like Brizzy here, you're a bad liar. Or people at the top that are good liars. Okay, the smile appeared to my lips. Did you see that huge bastard? You almost ate me. Thanks for... Juno didn't let me finish. She got up and silently left, leaving me alone. The module door closed behind her with a soft click. Juno be like, My assistant is a liar. Completely unaware what had happened and why Juno had reacted like that, I continued to sit in the chair in silence and solitude. Pixie? Yes, Rizzy? Did they say something wrong? Sorry, Brizzy, I can't talk about this. It's personal. Would you like to drink some water and change your clothes? I frowned even harder. What couldn't Pixie talk about? What can't you talk about? Sorry, Brizzy, I can't tell you. Would you like to drink some- Okay. This conversation was going nowhere. I leaned back in my chair and ran my hand over my face. Grains of sand stuck to my chin and I was covered with a layer of either dust or gritty dirt. Yeah, I would. Thanks, Pixie. Some time passed. Jenna didn't talk to me for the next day. When we went to the western front or forest, sorry, she worked without a single word. She signed the scan there and shoved samples to my hands but refused to answer any of my questions. I knew I had done something wrong but I didn't know exactly what it was. Angry wife? Sad life. Several times I tried to start a conversation or ask something, but Juno either answered shortly, yes or no, or ignored my words altogether. I felt lousy. During the few days that Juno had traveled together, I got a new story of communication and the sound of her voice. I'd never been as interested in anyone as I was in her. Maybe it was because I'd never talked to anyone so much about anything in the world, about life, about fate, about nature, and so on. It seemed to me that Juno had found a common language. I was sure that she felt the same way. And now I didn't understand what had happened or how to fix it. I didn't want to lose contact with Juno. I never experienced such togetherness with anyone as I did with her. When we were walking through the forest this time, quite a rare one with a comfortable shoulder road, Juno said, You lied to me, didn't you? You don't know anything about your planet. I froze. Oh my god. From wife to GF, real quick. Damn. No. No. I froze no longer trading behind her, my heart sank into my heels. My face turned bright red and didn't know what to answer with. I, well, but what makes you think that? Because it's impossible not to know about a freaking giant worm if you know the whole planet like the back of her hand. Juno turned to me, an angry expression on her helmet. I hesitated. What could I say? After all, she was 100% correct. Maybe I once read about something like this in books, but I didn't know the giant worms lived in the southern desert. Brizzy, tell me the truth. Yes, you're right. You're 100% right. I don't know much about nature. Or even much about the plant as a whole. I have never left my village. Oh shit. Juno looked at me in surprise and it growled fiercely. She kicked a large stone with her foot and it flew off in the other direction. Why did you lie to me? You should have said right away. Am I your babysitter? I needed a guy, not a liability. And you don't know anything? I couldn't tell. Otherwise, you wouldn't have taken me. That's right. I wouldn't take you and wouldn't be responsible for your life. But I had to leave. What else was I supposed to do? You came out of nowhere and said you were from another planet and I was... Okay, I was confused. Don't lie to me, Brizzy. You didn't get confused. You decided to play traveler and took advantage of me. I was about to say that as well. This is bad. I thought you were an experienced person. I thought you knew everything about your planet. But what did you turn out to be? A huge pile of stones around my neck. And if you had died yesterday, what would I do? What would I say in your village? What's the difference? I'm alive. You are alive thanks to me. Juno stamped her foot in anger. She was breathing heavily and the face on her helmet turned bright red with unfiltered rage. I didn't know how to justify myself. After all, Juno was right. I made a deal by lying to her about everything. The only thing I didn't lie about was my name and she had a big mission. She had to study the planet, not solve my problems for me. I felt terribly ashamed and immediately regretted that I had not told the truth from the very beginning. My, fi my face laid up with a blush. Sorry, Juno. I'm sorry. I really am. I didn't mean to lie. Just... Just what? Why did you end up by the river if you never left the village? Why did you ask to come with me? What do you want, Brizzy? An escape. Freedom. I saw you as a ticket... As a ticket. As a ticket to get the fuck out of here, you know? A one-way ticket out from this planet. I bit my lips, sighing heavily. I sat down on a falling log and dropped my head in my hands. Do you remember the story I told you about the boy being chosen? 
I remember, so what? What does that have to do with it? This boy is me. I was three years old when the elders told me that I had great destiny. That she had the mission for me, that's why I was sent here. According to the prophecy, I was supposed to become the ruler of the Northern Valley in the future, become a savior, and cope with some terrible threat. I never had a choice, you know. I was raised as a chosen one, I was treated as a chosen one, and not as a simple person. Even my parents called me the chosen one and savior every day, not by name. Everything was forbidden to me. I ate according to schedule, my day was scheduled by the minute. I wasn't allowed to read what I wanted, do what I wanted, go where I wanted. I lived there as a pet, and so on my 20th birthday, I couldn't do it anymore. I spoke in front of the whole village, I had to prepare a speech for every birthday, and this time I just... I pretty much know what I really wanted to say. That there is no mother of heaven, there is no destiny. Damn, that's like going to a Catholic church or a Christian church and say, Hey, God ain't real. Everyone would beat the shit out of you. They almost shot me to the healers. They would definitely lock me in the house and just wait for the threat to come, but it might have never come. And I would spend my whole life within four walls like some kind of decoration, not a person. So I ran away. I just ran through the woods until I was exhausted. I didn't know what to do. I could have just died alone. I, where would I go? Go back to the village? This was well a voluntary surrender for my whole life. And I don't want that kind of life, Juno. I want to live like a normal person. I want to travel, see the world. And you showed up. You need the guide. And I decided this was my chance. I could escape. I would see the world and you would help me with this. Well, I'd help you and you'd help me. I didn't mean any harm, Juno, honestly. I just wanted to become your friend. I sighed and ran my hands over my face. Uh, I, can't, I can't handle a sad expression, man. This is just too sad. I'm gonna end this video right here. I'm gonna see you in the next. My fur protogen. It could be two. I don't know. I don't know how long this game is. So yeah. Bye. See ya. Good luck with whatever you're doing. Subscribe.